Talk Steel Luke here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install a subwoofer in the back of your car. Now, a subwoofer represents one of the best bang for your buck upgrades when it comes to audio installs. Now, if you follow this guide, I'm going to show you how to safely install a subwoofer, and it's only going to take you less than a couple of hours. Hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon so you never miss a future release. Today I'm going to be installing this Vibe Sub in the back of my 2005 Audi A4. This is rated at 550 watts RMS and should provide a pretty good kick. This is an active sub which means the amplifier is built into it rather than being placed somewhere else. And on the whole I prefer active subs since they are neater, easier to install and you know the amps match correctly to the speaker. You can of course get higher quality and more bespoke setups with external amps, but if you have that level of knowledge already then this guide probably won't be for you anyway. It's worth noting that this video is aimed at aftermarket head units since they have the required outputs on the back of the head unit to connect a subwoofer. If you would like to see how I'd connect a subwoofer to a factory head unit please let me know in the comment section below. The major point I would like to stress is to make sure the cabling is adequate in both length and thickness. The more powerful the amp, the thicker the power cables have to be to support it. So I've left a link down below in the description that will help you determine exactly what thickness of cable you need. For this install, I'm using the Vibe Slick 8 gauge wiring kit. If your wires are too thick, then they become a little bit too hard to manoeuvre through the car and cost you more money than you need to spend. But really you need to watch if they're too thin, because if they're too thin, they can heat up and that's when electrical fires could possibly occur. I personally like these kits from Vibe Audio since they contain everything that you need to install your sub safely. So you've got your live power cable, earth, fuse, which is very important, never install a sub without a fuse, speaker cables and finally remote and RCA cables to connect to your head unit. This may look like a lot of wiring, but it's not too bad and I'll explain everything here. Let's start with a power cable. You need to run this power cable from the car's battery all the way to the sub, and this will normally mean from the bonnet to the boot. You're going to want to start off by isolating the car's power supply. We do this by removing the negative terminal from the battery. That is the one with the minus symbol and not the positive. Just took the wire down the side for now to make sure it doesn't regain contact with the battery. On the majority of cars, this can be removed with a 10mm socket. One of the hardest things about this install is getting the power cable into the cabin of the car. We need to go through the firewall, and depending on the car, this can be a little bit difficult. I don't recommend drilling it since you could get yourself into a mess. All you need to look for is a grommet so you can feed the wire through. These may be low down or in an obscure place. If you can't find one, take a look on the internet, especially owners clubs, for some advice. On my car here, there's a grommet just under this panel. Just pop it out and slice a hole in it and feed it over one end of the wire. The location of the grommet probably will determine what side of the car you run the cable up. This one here comes out behind the glove box, so logically, we need to move the glove box to gain access to us from the other side. This is normally pretty easy and they're normally held in with a few screws on the top and bottom. I also moved the cabin filter too on my car, which helped give me a bit more flexibility. You can see here where it enters the cabin. It's useful to attach the wire to a thinner piece of wire. Bike brake cables work great, and feeds a thinner wire through first. This will allow you to pull things through easier. Once it's through, we can focus on the interior. Don't worry about connecting the power up yet, so we don't want to do that, and we'll come back to it later. Next up, we want to connect the RCA and remote cables to the head unit. Of course this means removing the head unit and this varies depending on your car, so once again, your friendly neighbourhood owners club is the best place for helping you there. The RCA cables carry the left and right audio signal from the head unit to the amp. These are called pre-outs and they are unamplified outputs and almost all aftermarket head units have them. Usually they have one to three pairs. You want to connect the cables to the one that says subwoofer. If it doesn't say subwoofer then connect it to the one that says rear. We also want to connect the thin blue wire to the wiring harness. This is the remote switch wire. This lets the amp in the sub know when the head unit is powered on, so it knows to turn itself on too. I like to pull all these cables down into the footswell of the car next to the power cable. Some people will say that you should run the power and signal cables down separate sides of the car, since the power cable can cause interference with the audio signal. I don't really find this necessary though, since subwoofers are muffled by their very nature. If you were running this to an amp that was powering normal speakers, the running down both sides of the car would be much more necessary. 
Typically, you want to run these behind the sill panels as it provides you with a neat and safe installation. Most of these panels will clip off with a sharp tug. Trim removal tools can be useful here too. Some cars have wiring channels running under here anyway, which makes them much easier to slot your wires into. You want to feed this all the way to the back seat. On most cars, the rear seat base just pulls up and the seats fold down, so getting the wires from here to the boot of the car is really, really easy. Not so much on my car as the seats don't fold. I've got a solid panel here, so I just have to poke around a bit until I find a small gap that I could feed the wires through. At this stage it's worth thinking about your ground cable. These typically are only very short, as the shorter it is, the less electrical interference that's caused. We want to connect this to a good strong earth point to get a nice clean signal. The entire body of the car is an earth point, so just connecting this to the body of the car will complete the circuit, and that's why you don't need to run the negative cable from the battery. On my car the seatbelt anchor points prove to be the best spot. You want to make sure to get some sandpaper and rub any paint surrounding it away until it's bare metal as this will cause a bad earth. So I tightened the bolts back down and fed it through the back seat with the rest of the wires. Now it's on to connect the wires to the sub. I like to use these things, these are called fast plugs by Vibe and they allow quick removal of the power cables from the sub meaning that they can be easily removed from the car if required. You don't have to use them but I highly recommend them. To make sure I get a good connection, I'm using some ferrule terminals on the end of the wires. This means when I tighten the wire up with a screw, everything will stay firmly in place. I found about this, the wires can sometimes work themselves loose over the time. So we then connect the wires up with the positive and negative symbols and feed the remote wire into the middle one. We then do the same with the other end of the plug going into the sub. Then you connect your RCA cables up and that's the sub taken care of. Now we can install a fuse, connect the power cable to the battery and test the sub. Again I use ferrule terminals to make sure the fuse is as secure as possible. It's very important that the fuse is installed as close to the battery as possible. If the wire was to get severed, the fuse would blow and prevent any danger from occurring. However, the wire will still stay live up to the point of the fuse. You don't want to stick this in the back of the car because if you were to get into an accident or something and the wire broke, the last thing you want is a live wire underneath the carpet or near the fuel tank. Find a good place to put the fuse and cut the live wire at that point. Place two ends of the live wire into each end of the fuse and connect the final end of the live wire to the positive battery terminal. Normally these can be added to the main terminal by undoing one of these screws. Then connect the negative terminal back up and cross your fingers. Get into your car, switch on the ignition and turn on the head unit. If you go and look at the sub, there should be some kind of light on it. If so, play some music, begin quietly and test to see if it's working properly. There are normally two main control knobs on a sub that will allow it to be tweaked so it sounds good. These are the gain and the crossover. In a sense, you can think of the gain as a kind of a volume knob, and it really shouldn't be turned up to the max at all. The crossover determines what frequencies the sub plays. You don't really want it to be that high. If it plays too much frequencies, it will be muddy and become too intrusive. This all depends on how good your normal door speakers are and how good they handle mid-bass, but set it to somewhere around 80Hz and start adjusting back and forth from there until you find a sound that pleases you. You probably want to adjust the gain at the same time, it's just a matter of trial and error, and you'll probably end up adjusting the head unit equaliser too, to compensate for the change in acoustic dynamics. Obviously, try it on a few different styles of music, so you can find something that works across the board for you. 
And that's how you install a subwoofer in the back of your car. So thank you for watching this video so much. And if you want to see more contents like this in the future, just hit that subscribe button. But once again, thank you for watching. See you soon. Take care.